And right out of the gate, Yankees assistant general manager Billy up special correspondent I guess are you okay with that yeah yeah I'm good with that this, right. is, uh, this is great to be here and uh, thanks for having me on well we'd like to get you out of your cage so to speak because mm -hmm. we know that you're cooped up for four days and I'm curious what that dynamic is like between you and Brian especially when you're spending that much time together um, it's it's a good dynamic I mean there's a, there's enough people in the room uh, so there's, there's a lot going on there. We're always kicking around different ideas. Uh, I'd say there's anywhere between 12 and 16 other guys in that room. There's a suite with with rooms uh, adjoining on either end and cast crashes in one and I crash in the other. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's up early and uh, staying up pretty late, but kicking around everything we can. Billy, when you guys made a couple of moves the other day with Gregorius and Miller, Brian said he wishes he could have had those deals done sooner, quicker. How tough is it to be patient when you guys are trying to put something together like that? Well, I mean, it's great to be able to fill the roster out as quickly as possible. Uh, you want to check as many boxes as you can early, uh, but you do have to wait because sometimes clubs have other things going on. Sometimes you might have other balls in the air. Uh, so, so you know, the mindfulness and, and kind of carrying it out over a couple weeks or even a couple months in some instances helps. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's great to have everything done early and, and then we might be able to actually get outside of this hotel rather than be in it the whole time. Billy, when you look at how everything has gone down so far this offseason, a lot of the position players, big bats are gone, starting pitchers not so much. Are you surprised at all the way things are shaping up or, or not really? No, it, it, it's not that surprising to me. I mean, you'll, you'll see some some teams strike early, um, strike early and, and, and strike hard or aggressive. Uh, and then you'll see some things that drag out and, and even carry a little bit past uh, Christmas and even into January. I mean, we can be at the Super Bowl and, and there can still be some some players uh, unsigned. But but that's just the, the marketplace and, and how it goes and uh, how it goes in baseball now. It just it just carries itself out for, I, for the whole the whole time. I think that's kind of the consensus on Max Scherzer, or the way people think it's going to take a while with Scott Boris as his agent. You know, from the outside looking in, everybody's saying, well, once Lester signs, it'll kind of break a log jam. Maybe when David Robertson, wherever he signs, that'll break a reliever log jam. Do you guys think that way in that room at all? Do you sit there and go, come on, man, get let's if, if it's not us, let's get some of these balls moving here. No, we 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 don't really uh, you know subscribe to that. Um, I, I do think it, it, it can happen, uh, but I don't I don't think we sit around looking at somebody who might weigh in around one of those players. Um, and, and we've never really received feedback from an agent saying I'm going to wait. So for us, it, it's it, it's kind of more of the narrative than the actual reality. How many plans do you have going into an offseason, say this offseason? Mm -hmm. And how quickly do you have to move on your feet when a guy you might have checked on your box suddenly goes elsewhere? Um, you do have to be able to pivot uh, and, and adjust your plan uh, pretty quickly um, because you're always trying to take the temperature of the marketplace and you're focused on maybe one or two things to do individually. Um, but as that maybe falls to the uh, to the wayside or or something else pops up that was unexpected, you want to be able to pivot and adjust. So uh, you do walk in with a shopping list, I guess, uh, so to speak. But uh, it doesn't always uh, you don't always check every box. You guys did make some moves prior to coming into these meetings as far as the reliever market is concerned, signing Andrew Miller. Mm -hmm. A lot of fans wanting to know, is David Robertson still a possibility? What's the likelihood you see Batances, Miller, and Robertson in that bullpen come April? Hard to gauge a likelihood. Um, is it a possibility? Uh, of course it's a possibility. Uh, but, but as far as speaking specifically uh, with David and, and his actual likelihood, uh, pretty difficult to do right now. Uh, let me ask you a little bit about the acquisition of Didi Gregorius. And that was another box you needed to check yeah. off, get a short stop, yeah. young guy under team control for a while, Correct. reasonably priced. Does it give you the mindset of, thank goodness we got that position taken care of. Now with whatever money we could have allotted for that spot, we can kind of move it around and, and create some other opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Uh, very well said. It, it, it allows us to put somebody in that spot. Uh, that we can breathe easy on. Uh, between him and Brendan Ryan, we feel we're going to get above average defense at that position, no matter who's running out there. Uh, so it, it does allow you to, to take a, a, an easier breath uh, and maybe allocate some of those resources that, that might have been saved for that position, uh, maybe allocate those resources somewhere else. And everything comes with an opportunity cost. In this, in this instance, the opportunity cost was Shane Green, who was a very talented pitcher and meant a lot to our rotation last year and was set to mean a lot to our rotation this year. So. Maybe you can read the tea leaves and see the allocation might have to be spread in some, some different areas. So we just have to, again, to use your word, pivot and adjust.